Hello, this is Tina. Welcome back. Um, in this video, we are going to implement the authentication. Basically, as a user logs in with their username password, we will verify if the username password is correct. Then, we, if it's correct, we will give the JSON Web Token back. Okay. So, uh, JSON Web Token uh, authentication process involves uh, two. The first one is if we give a username password on the server side, it will verify if our username password matches. And if match, it will give the token back and the return token will go to the client. And later on, if a user want to make a request to something else like a slash hello here, uh, the token must be also be part of the uh, this request. And on server side, we are going to verify the JWT, okay? The token use the security key. And also we will verify if it has the right permission. And if it is, it will return the response back. So the first step we are going to do is talk about the flow of generating the JSON Web Token. Okay, so here when the client make a request to slash authenticate or slash login, it will go to the authorization filter first. This authorized filter is the last filter by default provided by Spring Security because we need to make sure if the user has the rights to do this post slash authenticate this uh, request right so generally for login we should use uh, permit all so it's but it's still gonna check okay and if yes it's gonna pass the request to next handler and this handler is what this handler is where we process this uh, authenticate with, uh, which is a uh, UDM password the thing okay and uh, uh, in the JW, uh, the controller is what we wrote. In the controller, we are delegated to what? We are delegated to Spring Security's authentication manager to load the information. And the authentication manager will eventually call what? Eventually, we will call user detail service. And this user detail service, we can customize. And here, we are also going to customize using the DLO authentication provider, like what we did the last time, OK? And if the success is go back to our controller, controller will call what? Call our util method inside this util to generate the token based on user, okay? Uh, because I want to put user's ID, user's um, role authorities, and uh, username, okay? Then I return the valid token, and I then I return back to the client. So this is our flow. We need to create one class two and three okay and this is the spring securities one the first thing is we need to create a spring pro script project with crud uh for product domain this one why i put it here is because later on i want to we want to check for authorization so uh we this one uh i just show you i already done okay uh, i will show you later Basically, you have a CRD operations on a single product domain model. You can use other domain models like a person, student, uh, book, anything like you like. Okay. And uh, first thing is, in all, before we implement our uh, JSON Web Token way, we first make sure our HTTP basic authentication works. Because in our JSON, this, this uh, flow, it still use what? JWT user detail service, which is a customer user detail service, which is we still will do is customize what? Customize our uh, authentication provider. So uh, actually basic in last demo we did, we still also use, uh, uh, we still also um, what's the, provide our own deal authentication provider. Okay, so we will enable this one first. And then we are going to turn off this actually basic authentication and use our own way. Okay, so this is the first step. Yes, so we are going to implement HTTP basic authentication because no matter what, we are going to use it. Okay, and if we test that part is a success, then we're gonna turn, we're gonna disable HTTP basic authentication, then enable our own. Okay. And here we are going to do something different. In previous demo, 
Our user is just a regular domain model. It's not part of the Spring Securities user tail. But this time, I'm going to do something different, which is our domain model user is going to implement user details. Okay, so let me go back to our uh, code. Here, I already have the basic structure set up for the product, like a product controller. See here, just how basic post get and get by ID. Have a product domain model. And it has a product repository and the service just for three APIs. Okay. And uh, I also connect to our database, a JWA demo, which is here. So far, this table, uh, if it only have one, which is a product. Okay. But in the product, I have nothing inside. Okay. So then we will do on top of this project. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is to implement the HTTP basic authentication. Okay, so I'm going to do is I'm going to create a model here, which a user. Okay, this is user our domain. Though. But this time I'm going to implement user details. This is different from what we did the last time, and you will see a benefit. Okay of use this one. but either way it works okay you can use your own way it doesn't matter okay so here because you the test service you have to override three methods uh to provide you our own implementation and i'm going to add this one to be an entity okay and uh, let me also add a long book one which is called uh, data okay and here because the entity i must have an id and then I'm going to do is have a username. I will use email, okay, to make sure we we'll customize our uh, data. And here I'm going to add another one, which is string role, okay, just a single role. It's either the mean or either user or others single role, okay. And to implement this one, we have to turn this role string role into a granted authority the one we used yesterday is using one just a new simple authority a uh, simple granted authority role it's going to turn into a, a, a granted authority okay password is what password is our password and then username is what username is our email we customize the, the not using the default username okay so this is the user the next one we, are, we have to do is what? We have to create our service, which is what? Uh, custom user details service. Oh, uh, my bad. This is uh, refactor the name. S E R V I C. Okay. Refactor service. And this one, we are going to do what? We are going to implement user detail service. And for this user detail service, it has only one method called a loader user by username. Loader user by username. And here I'm going to add a service. And here we already have a username, which is your email, right? We have to query database to find the user if it exists or not. Okay. So uh, we are going to have a repository, have a user repository. User repository okay and it's an interface okay and extends on jpa it's a it's a choice to use jpa or crud okay implement the class but here use the crud is also fine doesn't matter okay here i'm going to use a repository and we only have one method here we are going to use is called the optional what's thing optional user not a find by username okay find by email map and here is email okay and this method is going to be used in our customer user detail service okay so here i'm going to inject do the constructor based dependency injection private final repository and here i'm going to use a long book to generate a constructor okay structure and now here because load the user by username, he expect to be a user details, right? And now in this implementation, we are doing what? We are make our user is a type, is a subtype of user details. So we no longer need to do what? Uh, let me open our previous object, okay? A project. So in our previous project, 
uh, this one your window our previous project our model user it's not is is not a type of your details so in our customer your details we have to do what we have to based on this user we loaded user we loaded from database then generate a your details okay this is the step i have to do but now our use domain model user domain model which is already implements your details so in our customer data service you don't need so we just need to return what we have okay so here i will use user repository dot find my email and this is your name if i find it will return all else through through what through username password not found so just the only one line now previously if we do like that way you may have uh, multiple lines to do you have because this user returned by the repository is not a type of user details so you have to build a thing build a user using this one okay build a user but for this case we no longer because this user found by email is also is already a type of user details so we don't don't need to customize okay and uh, here is uh, if fine it will return a user if not it will return your name not found okay so now is my customer user uh, detail service now this part is done we are going to do a configuration for our security so here i'm going to have a package first config and i'm going to have uh, my uh, spring security config and uh, just need to add the configuration and if you need to enable method level which is pre uh, pre authorized post authorized you can also do this one okay the first thing we do is uh, we had a bin bin for public public uh, security field chain okay and a field chain and this one okay and this one we are going to return what return http build okay and between them uh first i'm going to turn on http uh no 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 turn on um http basic okay customer miners with default this one to enable uh the what's the this one is to enable the actually basic authentication to make sure our code the customer uh, detail service and also configuration for dl authentication provider it works okay okay this one we are going to disable because uh, we're going when we have tested the post or put it's going to have problem csrf csrf dot uh, disable okay and uh, we also we can also add some authorization request okay auth auth dot uh what's saying request matcher if it's a slash uh, products slash slash must to have uh has uh, uh authority admin okay and uh, for any other request uh any other request dot permit all okay so we are going to do like this way. let me make it to be like this okay so for anything under the products gonna be enabled why have error here oh method reference uh i don't know what's the reference to be used okay so you can change it by yourself i just do like this way okay so this is our security chain and uh, later on well after we test we're going to disable this one then the next one we are going to provide our customer detail service authentication provider okay authentication provider and here we will have deal percentage provider deal authentication provider auth provider data set do the detail service and this one i'm going to steal is what is this one okay customer your detail service so here i'm going to have a required argument constructor here i will have a private what thing uh user detail service okay and here this one uh, i'm making it final so gonna use the constructor best so here the service 
I also need to have a bin, which is public password encoder and return new by crypt password encoder. And here I will have auth provider auth provide auth provider dot set password encoder password encoder okay then I return auth provider here do I need to give a do I need to give a data source here? I remember here I need to give a data source. Okay, data source. Okay, you can also do dependency injection here. Okay, data source. I, I guess I need to give a data, data source. Let me check. Okay. Mm. Oh, no need. No need. No need. No need. No need to give here. We will try. I already forgot. Okay, this or not. Okay. So now I will click application is done. Let's uh, test if it works for this part so far. Okay. We I need to add some users in our table. Let's see here. Now we have uh, one table product, one table for user. Okay. So both of the product uh, table. Uh, and the user table are empty now. I'm going to write a test inside here, which is uh, called the file product.http. Okay. And now, if I want to have a gate localhost slash products, okay. And I have a basic, I don't know, authorization, authorization, basic, okay. And give username password. Let me find some unit password. Okay, let me add first workbench and uh, I'll load uh, for last time what we have here. Uh, should it be users? Do I have anything in users? Okay, now do I have my user? Oh, yes, here. So I'm going to copy, copy, and uh, then I will add inside uh, our own here. So for this user, oh, let me change the here to be not okay so it won't generate anymore let me restart let me report reload everything so the table should be still there table should be still there and I'm, now i'm going to add the data here you can also add a save okay but i'm lazy i don't want to do now okay. so yo oh my oh my goodness okay it's fine okay so here i forgot to add generated by myself okay so then i'm going to add it okay so for the user one email is john at test.com password is what we copied and a role is admin and i'm going to add another one which is called uh, to user which is edward at test.com and the same user password is user type okay. and this one is one two three four five and when we go product, I have a John at test.com, which is one, two, three, four, five. If it's successful, it should give me the, the, the empty array because in my product table it's empty. Okay. If that is uh, work, let's take a look at what happened. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's give us empty array, which works. Then we can change to be Edward. Edward should have failed because our configuration is a full product, it must have a role admin. Okay, a forbidden. Okay, uh, let's uh, do another one which is add some data into a database. Okay, post uh, HTTP localhost product slash products. Okay, products are we still using authorization which is a basic and have a jump. Because only him had the rock test dot com one two three four five okay and then content type is application JSON and I'm going to have uh, uh yes the product automatically generated oh no uh, it's automatic generated on ID okay product okay product is automatically generated so I don't need to give product. ID I just give on the name and the price okay so let's give a name on the price name HP price uh, price 199 okay the post 
and uh, success for his John and uh, Dale. Uh, two nine nine. Okay. Okay, Dale. Then we go here. We'll get. Oh, oh because that one is uh, Edward. We give John. We should get it too. Okay. So far, what we have done. So far, what we have done is to configure our H basic use our customized user detail service what we have done is just to have a user our own user a domain model but we implement user details and later on when we customize our user detail service here it's gonna be easier because the user fetched from a database is still a type of user details we just need to return it there's no need to customize we just convert our user to user details then we did a spring security configuration, which will use our authentication provider and password encoder. And here is a configure for HTTP basic. Okay. Now let's go over the slide a little bit for review. Here, as we mentioned, here is our customized user. Okay. Yeah, my bad. Okay. And we implement find by email, and we implement our customized user details. Okay. It only you make sure you implement your detail service. It only has one, which is load user by username. Okay. Next slide is our configurations. Here, this is my conf oh, sorry, my bad. Okay. Uh, the, the, this is uh, my configurations for security chain, which you populate our security uh, filter chains. This is base HTTP basic. This is for authorization filter. We disable this one. You can also disable the session manager because we are our session is stateless. Okay, you can also do this configuration, which is make current session is stateless because JWT we don't use session. And this is our authentication provider for DL provider, which will require customer user detail service and password encoder. Okay. Now we are going to disable this part. And uh, then we are going to use our own logic to actually generate the JWT. How to do it? Uh, this is a testing with How to do it? Uh, first, in order to generate a JWT token, we don't write everything by ourselves. Okay. And later on, we'll need to verify. So we are going to use the dependencies, which will do all things for you. So JWT, Java based JWT, is a Java library which providing end-to-end -end JSON web token creation and verification, okay? The primary operation in using uh, JJ, J, JWT involving building or parsing JWT. The dependency are these three. You need to, it's not a part of a Spring Boot. These three are not a part of Spring Boot. So we have to manually add by ourselves, okay? Uh, I'm going to delete this one, uh, close this one, not delete. Close this one, and in our poem, we will add our JWT. Uh, okay, I'm going to put it here. Yeah, it have a. Uh, it has a thing. Mm, which is. Uh, okay. One is a JJ API import and Jackson. Uh, import. And the last one is Jackson. Yeah. Jackson. Ah, this three, okay. After you have this three, then you can use it to generate a JSON web token and also to do the verification for us. Okay. Uh, <coughs> next one, we want to first implement our uh, JSON token utility class. Okay. The here, we can make the generate token this thing to be what to be static. Okay. And the reason I don't make it to be static is because I want this is secret and also this expiration uh, length is getting from our properties file. And in order to make sure we can use this two value, 
then we have to make it to be spring manager bean. That's why suppose you don't you want this this one and this one to be hard coded, then you don't need to do uh, like add, you don't need to add a component. You just make this one to be static and this one also to be static. It's gonna work, okay? So to generate a token, you create your own method. I give a user because I want to use ID, email, and roles. Okay, that you will set the issue date, expiration date, and sign up with the keys. Okay, this sign up key now it cannot be a string key. You must be using the key provided by JJWT. Okay, so that's why we create another method. The secret is passed here, and this is the algorithm we are using. Okay, now let's see. First thing I'm going to in my application dot properties file here I'm going to have another app dot jwt dot secret. Okay, I'm going to give some random number, and you cannot have special characters like parentheses. Okay, app dot jwt dot uh, expiration. Okay, equals I'm going to use three seconds, three minutes. This one is three minutes. Okay. Which is one uh, by a million second it is one thousand multiplied sixty multiplied three so it's a three minutes. And then I'm going to have a util. Uh, util oh, okay this is a package, and here I'm going to have a JWT token util oh, okay. And here I'm going to annotate with a component. With this component, <coughs> excuse me, I will have a private string secret. Okay. And a private uh, long, uh, what's the thing? Expiration. Okay. So here I can use value. Value to refer to what? To refer to. Our application, which is this one first, okay. Refer to a secret, and the same thing here for the thing for here, okay. And the second one is for the expiration three, 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 what's it? Three minutes. And then I'm going to have a method here called the generate token, okay. Because later on in our controller. It's going to do have a, a generate token here. I'm going to have our user. Okay. This user is our domain model. Domain model. Make sure you are using our domain model one. Okay. Then inside here, not a map. Return uh, JWTS dot. Let me see, okay, do I have my dependency loaded? Because I add dependency, oh, it's not here, that's why. Dependency, make sure you refresh. Have the three JJWT, the API dependencies, okay, uh, here, okay. Then I return JWT start builder dot, uh, uh, wait a minute for a second, dot set subject, which is my payload. Payload, I'm going to pass ID and I use the format which separates the comma. And later on, we are going to use this one to get the data uh, when we do validate the token. Okay, user, you decide what you want to give here. I will give email which is your name, and I will also give what's thing that get raw. Okay, that's the things I want to put for the payload subject. Okay, then I will. Uh, Set, uh, you can set issue at okay. I'm going to use uh, uh what's the I'm going uh, I'm going to use uh, uh, system system dot current milliseconds okay, and then I'm going to set expire which is new date system dot million current milliseconds plus the three minutes which is our expiration okay and then you are set uh, uh, sign okay dot dot sign dot dot sign sign with a key 
and also the algorithm. So the key is this part. The key is this one. Private key, this one. I just copy this part of it. I don't want to write okay. the key. Yeah. I still have. Okay. I'm glad it's not long. This is uh, the key, okay. And we inc include it. Hmm? Sign dot compact. Okay. Here, it should import. Then import it probably because uh, here I have errors. Okay. I will do gate sign key and. Uh, the algorithm is the hashing algorithm signature I'm going to use two five six okay this one import port class okay and this one import this one import okay so this is a to generate token basically you decide the, the subject you want and then you decide the algorithm you expire date and this is your secret you decide okay so here uh, we have finished our JW token as the session. The next one is the next one is uh, when the user logs trying to log in. When the user trying to log in, they need to pass what username and a password to me, which means later on, later on when I'm going to test our application in the HTTP. Suppose here I have an auth HTTP file. And I have to go to post, suppose the URL is go to slash auth slash login, okay? And I give account type is application JSON. And my username, you, you know, you, you can give email. And here is a John, John at uh, test.com. You can, uh, you, you will also need to have a password, okay? Password is one, two, three, four, five. So the problem is in my controller, how can I get this data? In Spring MVC, you can use a request, request a body. It will automatically convert our JSON into a JavaScript object. So the problem now is which JavaScript should I hold? Should I use this user? Yes, you can do. This user can have email and uh, password, right? And have a role. Uh, but it also have other things like get authority these things. So one way is you can directly use the user when this request comes. Okay, well let me delete some of them. Okay, product application. When this request comes, email password definitely you can use user. Okay, and also for this response, response gonna be return a valid token. So which object come? Because we are build a REST application, right? We we have to use an object to represent the response. Okay, uh, you can use a string too. Okay, but then for this one, which object? If we are using object, which one should I use? So here is a choice. One way is directly use user. The other way is what? The other way is you can have a project class just to represent authentication request on the response. So what's going to happen is in my controller, I will have a JWT, JWT authentication controller, okay? This controller is a REST controller and it has a request mapping, which is what? Which is slash auth, because my request is going to be like this way, slash auth login, okay? And here we have a post, Post the mapping. The mapping is go to slash login, and in the login, it's gonna be response entity. Okay, uh, and here we are log in, and here no. So now here, how can I get this data? Okay, because it's a post. It's a part of the request body. How can I get it? We can put a user there to hold. But uh, user will have ID roles. I don't want to use it. So another way we can do uh, is here. Okay, another way we can do is we create a auth 
request okay and this one just a single project just a simple project which only has the email and have a password okay let me import this one okay so now let in my controller here i can write what request body okay request body auth request auth request so here it will hold what it will hold our username and the password you passed uh, through here you passed through here you hold it we can try okay we can try uh, return response entity dot uh, no content here first oh, no 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 content no content dot build okay Later on, we are replaced with a token, okay? But here, we can just do a test if it works. I can get this John and one, two, three, four, five, okay, to this auth login. It should work because my Spring Security here configuration except this slide or all other permit all, okay? Now, let's try this auth. You, I forgot to add a system dot out. Okay, system dot out dot print line auth request dot. Uh, yeah, I have two string there. Okay, so uh, reload it. Okay, okay. Now let's uh, make a post request. You will see response body is empty, and here we already get John and the password. Okay. So now it goes here. And uh, based on our flow we talked, now the request that go, it already passed the authorized feature, go to what? Go to authentication controller. Then we are going to validate the username and password using authentication manager based on authentication manager provided by Spring Security, okay? Authentication method based by authentication manager. So here we need to have authentication manager. manager okay so now when i use required argument constructor you will see here what thing no beans of authentication manager it cannot find and spring trying to generate an instance of this one cannot do dependent injection this is because there's no bean if no we just define one okay bean public authentication manager Authentication manager. I think this one is here. We have authentication configurer. Okay, let me double check. Okay, uh, this one. ah yes, authentication configuration. Okay, here we have authentication configuration. Okay, then config. Okay, then here uh, we can return configuration dot get authentication manager. And after I have this bin here, I did not three exception. Okay. Uh, after I have this bin here, now you can see here to get it. Okay. So now we have authentication manager. So we can just do authentication manager dot authenticate. And when we authenticate here, expect you have a authentication. Okay. Authentication this object. And uh, in uh, last. Uh, in last uh, uh, one of the video, we mentioned that. Okay, let me see. Okay, see here. When we talk about authentication manager, okay, there's a one which is username password, which is this one. Username password token. This is implementation of authentication, and uh, because we are logged in use username password, that's why we generate username password authentication token. Okay, so here you want an authentication if I ask you to uh, ask you to use the authentication method, right? So and you want to have a uh, authentication object, I will generate one for you. So here I'm going to use a concrete, which is your name, password, authentication token. Okay, is this one? Yes. Okay. And then a token. Uh, Okay. Equals. Uh, I will say authentication. Okay. Equals new username, and you can also use uh, uh, what's the, and you can also use authentication. 
okay and here and here this one can be put it here and here using password authentication token it expect to have what it is expect you have what you have object principle and object uh, uh, credentials this one can be your name this one can be a uh, password okay so here we are to get a username we are to get a password we through auth request dot email auth request dot gate password okay so now when we do authenticate when we do authenticate potentially this part could be fail okay and this part if three exceptions is going to fail and if that is three exception it means a success so for this entire th for this part uh, we can also give the entire thing okay try catch okay try catch It's already us okay then here i'm going to res but request okay or you can use what response entity dot status uh do do we have a um uh, authorized okay. uh, status status http status dot uh, author uh, dot uh, authorized okay dot or get a message if you want you can okay but credentials are authorized which means you don't have permission to do that okay and if successful we authenticate it after we authenticated what should we do we have to get based on our uh, uh no, no, based on our uh, diagram after we authenticated uh, what is Oh, here after we authenticate it we have to call jw token util to generate a token right we have to give you details the reason we have to use you details because here in uh where is my util because here is a user okay and uh, if here i for auth request i only have email password i don't have what i don't have id I don't have ID. Why is ID so here? I don't have ID. We don't have a role. Okay, it only has a username and a password. So to do that, one way you can do is uh, uh, not this one here. Oh, not this one. Uh, here. No, not this one. Okay. Until twenty five. Okay. One way to do it. once you do authentication, it will also give you authentication which means once we do authenticate it will give you authentication this authentication is already past the authentication okay your name password is correct and in, in this authentication it is going to have what it is going to have your authenticated is true you're going to have your principles in your principles you're gonna have id username password roles okay the, the, because the principle gonna be represented currently logged in user okay uh, for authentication now so here I'm going to have a authentication object uh, authenticated okay. okay and here I'm going to get a user u equals authenticate authenticated get a principle okay and here import our class okay then here we have to do customize okay because here is a you detail okay and then i'm going to do down casting to the child then i'm going to need our jw token util this one here uh i have already required okay private final jw util jw util and here i'm going to do is uh here import eh? let me import please why create a uh, why need to create uh, let me import import um uh let's see here dot util dot 
j double token okay so now it's gone it doesn't have find out okay so now i'm going to use this one dot generate token give user u and it will give us what it will give us a string token token okay like this way then we can what we can return response entity and here for this token if it's a single string you can just do okay which is what which is a token you got me and in the slides what i did is besides the token i will also pass the email back so i use off response okay and here uh, let me add the data here okay and here also add an all argument constructor like that. and here i'm going to have a private string token you can also add additional things okay string i have email okay so here from here you will have what's the uh, response entity dot okay okay with what okay with new auth response token plus user dot get email okay now let's see if it works okay everything is done let's do a test okay so clear everything go to off now if it is success i should get a token okay you got a token did i did i forget did i comment the actually basic Oh, I also commented this one. We are no longer use actually basic to do authentication anymore. Okay, but it still works. I just commented this one. But the idea here is now, uh, when I use uh, post slash auth slash login with the correct username and password, I will get the token. And later on, when we do verification uh, validation, okay, which is authorization, we are based on this token. We have to process the token. Okay, so if I give wrong password. Okay, if I give a wrong password, when I, okay, you will see bad credentials. It's a 401 unforbidden. See here, forbidden. Oh, it's a say denied. 401 unforbidden. It's a bad credentials. Okay. Uh, why? Uh, let's try use uh, Edward. Edward should still work. Okay, still works. Okay, both of them. So that is the authentication part. Uh, of a JWT basically is yes, you give me correct username password I will give you log uh, give you a token and to do that the flow the flow is uh, when we go to slash auth slash login it will go through past the authorization filter to see okay this uh, request is permitted then it will hit our controller controller will do all will ask authentication managers dot authenticate method and if we want to uh, call this method we have to provide the authentication object then we use instance unm password authentication token to populate right and it will query uh, this man manager will automatically find the dl authentication provider in the dl authentication provider we use our jwt uh, we use our customer user detail service and we provide also a token it will aut automatically query database to fetch for us and compare for us and if everything is successful this authenticator will provide authentication object populated with a currently logged in user you can get from principle and then we will use that principle to generate token okay and once the token returned i will return token to the client that's the flow how to do that okay uh that's it for today's uh, uh this video and uh, thank you see you next time bye bye